Welcome to yet another tutorial. Although today we'll do something slightly different, because other than the last couple of weeks where I've primarily shared with you what I've built and how you can use that, today we will focus on enabling you to be able to do similar stuff. And the first step is to set up your NIME analytics platform correctly, including the right extensions and so on and so forth. And that's exactly what I'm going to walk you through today, so that you will never have to worry about <laughs> installing a single Python package um, of a workflow that you've downloaded in your life again. Okay. Oh, and as you can see, I have a new avatar, and I want holidays. So let's get started. So first you want to go to nime.com. I have this open already and in the top right corner, click on download. You will then see a sign up form. Um, don't worry, you can give them your data. You don't have to, although so I have to admit it's not that you'll be massively spammed. Say more keep you posted whenever there are really updates that you need. But if you don't want to give them your data, you can also simply accept the terms and conditions and click on download. So this then uh, forwards you to the download section. And for different operating systems, you get the links to the different installers that are available. If you own Windows, the easiest way is to simply go for the Windows installer that guides you through the process. But you can also go for a zip archive where you just extract it and start. That's really up to you, whatever you want to do. So we go for the installer and I guide you through the process. Okay, so while Nime is downloading, how about we get to downloading the second piece of the equation, which is the Miniconda installer, so that we can use Miniconda and set it up in Nime later on in the video so that he can then easily make use of um, the Conda environment propagation node when you use workflows that you download or when you create your own workflows for sharing. To grab an Conda, simply go to Buffer, type mini Conda, and follow the first link that you find. On the first window, you will immediately see uh, different installers, again, for different operating systems. We will just grab the Miniconda for Windows 64-bit. This should be quite a quick download, as it's not the largest package. Hence, once it has finished, simply launch it. Once you open it, follow the instructions, accept the license agreement, I install it just for myself, choose a pass. I recommend leaving the default and also remember where you save it. You will need that later when you install Python or when you set up Python and Nime, better to say. I just choose a different directory because I have it already in storage. And then um, I would include a start menu entry and I would also take to edit um, to your path, especially if you don't have Python yet installed, this makes sense. And Lenny click install. I just won't do that right now because on my operating system it's already installed. And that's it. I have a request for all of you. The channel has been growing slowly but surely and I'm really happy with the pace that we are going. But you would really help me out if you quickly Leave the first remote, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button just to help me beat the algorithm and become more relevant for other people that want to automate their life away. So with that, thank you very much. Alright, done what seems to have finished. Simply browse to wherever it is or go to your donuts in the browser and click on open. This will then take a moment to start the installation process. So I installed it just for myself. Accept the agreement. Select the location. You'll need around a gigabyte of disk space for this. And 
Um, honestly, I leave most of this as a default. I let you know when there's something that really needs your attention. So this memory settings can actually be quite important. I think it defaults to half of your available RAM memory. So I have 64 gigabytes, so it defaults to 32. But I think I would at least recommend to go with two to four gigabytes. Otherwise you may run into out of memory there was when you process semi-large data sets. I keep this as default so. Enable long pass I would recommend as well with many people having stuff on the OneDrive nested into folders and folders. You don't want to be limited to I think 256 characters. And then you finish by clicking the install button. Okay, the installation is just finished and I've started the um, file via my desktop. I've actually downloaded a fresh version in a zip format so that everything that I do is now comparable. And as you can see, it's loading up and the first pop-up that you're getting is how to choose the location for your NAM workspace. So in my case, I just go with whatever is the default. Doesn't matter. This will be a new workspace for me, I think. And then I'm with a keep loading up. This may take a moment, but overall it should be quite quick. So once Nime has opened up, you can actually start familiarizing yourself a little bit with what it looks like. You could connect to the Nime hub at the bottom if you've signed up with an account. So that is what you need to do if you want to publish workflows like, like I do, so that other people can download them and use them. Or you can simply start exploring your local space or click to create your first workflow. So that's what we are going to do. And you can choose whatever name you like. I just leave it with the default for now. So once your workflow has been created, you can see the general user interface. On the left hand side, you see as a default your search bar for the different nodes. You know, so every node represents a different set of functionalities and you can just connect nodes to one another so that you can sequence their functionalities. Let's briefly go through some of the settings that I would recommend you set before you get started. Because for example, if I now start searching here for, let's say, Ruby-based. Okay, I actually finds that. Um, that's good. Um, what you want to check is if you click on Fiditar, whether it's set on starter nodes only. So let me just do that. Uh, okay, that still pops up, but let's just compare. Based. So there are three entries if I search like that. And if I go and set this to all nodes, as you can see, there's a lot of more stuff that starts popping up. So my recommendation is... Although you may be a beginner, to change this to all nodes so that you are just not missing out. Um, as a second topic is, there are some extensions that I highly recommend that you install. And we'll, we'll look at two different ways how you can store them. If you know what extension you're after, then you can manually install it. But there's also a way how you can install extensions if you access a certain workflow. So one of the extensions that I think everyone should have enabled all the time is the columns, uh, the expressions one. So that gives you one also very, one very useful node, the columns expressions node. And the way to do that is you go to menu, select install extensions, and in the window that pops up, you can just use the so let's just search for um, expressions. And there you see the name expressions popping up. Just select that, click on next. Then in this window, you have to select it again and go next again. And last but not least, you need to accept the license agreement. So most of these will be these uh, GNU licenses, general public licenses. There may be some other notes maybe that uh, someone with a commercial interest has created that may have a different 
um, license, or just pay attention to that, and then click finish. In the bottom left, you then see it says installing software, and then you get the pop-up to restart your platform. So we will uh, not do that for now. I quickly pause and pull up one of the workflows that has a Python extension included, and we'll drag and drop that into our space and then see how it looks like if we install the extension from there. So bear with me for one second. Okay, let's do this. So let's browse to the workflow for my last video. So just go to this Add to its video, go to the description and click more, and then follow the link to my Nime Hub. Then make a small screen and simply drag and drop this cross. And what you can see is that the workflow then gets imported. That may take a moment. And as you can see, uh, there was uh, a missing note. So the Conda environment propagation and Python scripts, and it asks you to uh, search for this. So just click yes. It automatically defines the extensions related to the node that you don't have yet we select them so we can go just next again and go finish now it's installing again that may take a moment so i pause until i'm back cool they took it a longer and um, as you can see after it installs it asks you to restart again so i go no here because i want to fix one last thing and then we'll do a manual restart as you can see, after we dragged and dropped the workflow, it created a new tab up here. So we have our initial blank project here, and this one here. And here it says in the yellow bar that this is not part of your space yet, so you need to save a local copy. So to do that, go to the top left and click on Save Workflow As, and then just um, select wherever you like. So I just leave it on the main workspace and go OK. So now this one is saved and secured as well. And then you can just close and restart. So that's almost everything done for today. We have downloaded Nime. We have learned how you can install extensions either by manual installing them or by downloading a workflow that has extensions included that you don't have yet. We've downloaded Miniconda, and now what we'll do is we'll quickly set up Miniconda in your Nime Analytics Platform environment that will allow you to not have to worry about any Python environments as long as there's a Conda node included. And then last but not least, as a little bonus, we will build a very quick user interface component similar to what you've seen from myself in previous videos. So let's do it. Back in Nime, let's quickly set up Miniconda for your Nime installation. In your Nime window, in the top right corner, click on the Preferences button. And after that, expand the Nime section and click on Con now. There's a good chance that we by default um, detect the right pass, and after a moment, it will show that the version has been tested and everything's all right, so then you don't need to do anything. If that's not the case, um, remember how I told you to uh, make note of where you saved and installed your con now? Simply click browse, go to that folder, no need to select uh, any file or anything like that, and click apply and close. So one other thing that you can quickly check is going to Python, and um, yeah, you can leave it as bonded, so with Nimes as a default environment coming with it already uh, that you can use without installing Minicon or anything like that or consciously installing Python on the system. But let's say if you are someone like me who wants to expand the Nime functionality using Python scripts, you may then want to 
switch to Condar and manually select the Condar environment that you have um, set up yourself. As you can see, I have quite a few of these. But for now, we leave it with bundle it and then click apply and close. Okay, the last thing on the list for today is to build a simple UA component that might be already very helpful for you. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's assume that the more you get out of your ERP system, SAP or whatever CRM system, data in a certain format, and every month you will want to transform that or create reports out of that, and you're doing that in, in NIME. Um, there's in a fairly easy way where you can create a file upload component to easily select the file and then let everything in its one. So let's do that. In your node section, search for widgets. And all these blue widgets are things that you can build a user interface with. I mentioned already we want to upload a file. So we take the file upload widget and drag and drop it into our workspace. So if we say execute and view, you are already prompted to select the file. But before we do that, let's quickly configure. So right click configure. The label will be the message that is displayed um, above the select button. So let's call that choose reporting file. And here we will give it uh, a name of report upload and click OK. And now if we say execute an open view, you see choose reporting file. If we click select by being prompted to select a file, I've placed a dummy data set up here that I select. It's about the Starbucks drinks menu. Go apply, and in my case, uh, applied as a new default. Hit close. And you see the traffic lights on green. And down here, we have a lot of information. We have seen by name. We have the uh, URL. We have the path, and this is exactly what we will need in a moment. And you can also see that we have selected a CSV file. So what we now do with this file, of course, we know there's nothing that we can really look at here. So we now need to pass it to a CSV reader. So clear the search, type CSV, and you will find a CSV reader. Drag and drop that onto your workflow canvas. And then this little red dot connect it, drag it across to the CSV reader. That is a flow variable port. So these things down here that we see are variables. And by dragging and dropping the connection like this, we can make these variables and the values accessible to the CSV reader. So then right click on configure your CSV reader. And normally you can just go and select it here but you then have to worry about a lot of other things. So um, this cut that a little bit short. So uh, you can now configure this by going to the flow variables tab and expand settings, expand file selection, and where it says path, open up the drop down and you will see the report upload path that we've, that's the name that we've given it uh, just a moment ago. So if you now click OK, right click and execute, then you will see that we now have a nice data set. So let's say uh, we now uh, want to do some pre-processing. Let's say we only need the beverages at our coffee. Um, let's add a roll filter node. We could just drag and drop it. There's another easy way. You can just take this output port, drag it somewhere, and then search for role. Fill it out. Enter, and it's automatically connected to us in the set. 
You then right click and configure your roll filter. You can now choose the column that you want to test. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the name was, so let's quickly go back. It's expensed beverage category, so we want to filter this for the value of coffee. Right click configure. Scroll up, beverage category. Use pattern matching. There we copy our name, which is a copy. And we say that we include rows by attribute value. So that means wherever there's coffee in the beverage category that would be included in our data set, we could also say to exclude that. Then we get anything else other than coffee. But we're just limited to coffee fun. Go apply. Okay, execute. And there you go. Now you see that here we have four rows and 18 columns, where previously we had it turn 42 rows and 18 columns. So the last trick, if you now want this to make this sort of invisible to your end view though, you select everything and in the top bar, you say create component. Give it a name. Let's call this select component create process. And if we now go execute, you will see the traffic light is on green, but we can't do anything. There's no output port. So the first thing that we do to fix this is select our component and click on the little plus icon. And here we're going to select a table output mod. Once we've done that, you right click, scroll down to component and open component. And the only thing that's left to do is to connect your row theta output port to the component output port. Then up here, you can go back, execute, and as you can see down here, we have the table available. And now you can build it, you know, whatever you want to do with it. So that's a very easy component. I do more of this in the future. So stay tuned.